What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender Rigid Body Simulation tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to continue using the physics settings in order to create some falling dominoes inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so to start off, we're going to add a plane and then we're going to add a domino. So we're just going to do a Shift A, Mesh, Plane, and then we'll just scale this up for right now making sure that when we scale it up, we go to Object, Apply, and we apply our rotation and scale. So we've applied our scale to this. Then I'm gonna delete out my default dog, and I'm going to add in a cube. So I'm just gonna do a Shift A, Mesh, Cube. And then we're going to, one thing that's gonna get really important when we do this is actually creating this to the proper size and weight. So there's some other things you could do with this as well, but for now, let's go ahead and model this as if it was a real domino. So if this, gonna, if this was gonna be a real domino, this would have a size more like two inches instead of 24 inches. So we'll just type in two in the size, and we'll zoom in on this. Then we're gonna move it up, scale it, along the red axis. One thing to note about this one is you might wanna leave these a little bit wider than you usually would. For some reason, the physics in this, if these aren't fairly wide from a base standpoint, you start running into issues. So I would make sure to leave these kind of wide. Then we're also gonna scale this on the Z axis in order to make it tall. So you wanna make sure this has a big enough base that it doesn't just randomly start falling inside a blender. So I'm going to use an add-on called Drop It in order to move this up and then drop it along my surface. So now we have a domino and a plane. So to start off, let's go into our physics settings and we're gonna make our plane a rigid body. So go down click on physics properties and click on rigid body. So when you do this, there's an option for type. You wanna set this to passive, meaning that it's in here and other things are gonna to react to it, but it never really moves. So we're gonna set our plane to a rigid body. We're gonna set this to a rigid body, but we're gonna leave this one as active. And one thing we wanna do is we wanna change our mass. So our mass in this situation for a domino is gonna be very low. So I'm just gonna type in a value of like 0 0.01 and hit the enter key. So now if we were to hit play, notice how our domino falls over, right? And we don't want our domino to fall over. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, under the dynamics section, we're gonna turn on deactivation and we're gonna click on the button for start deactivated. So what that means is that means that now this domino, if I hit play, isn't gonna move until something else interacts with it. So now let's start by creating a simple array. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to come in here, add a modifier. We're gonna add an array modifier just like this. And we're gonna set this, oh, one thing that we're gonna wanna make sure that we do is make sure that you go to your object and click on apply, rotation, and scale. Um, because we scaled this, we wanna make sure that we've applied that to our object. But now, under modifiers, let's add an array. So we'll just create a simple array, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a relative offset. Then we'll also run this up, and we'll call it maybe like 20 of these, right? So now, what we have, is we have 20 dominoes in here that we've created as an array. And so let's go ahead and add a sphere. So we've created our array. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a second because I wanna show you what it'll do if we add our sphere right now. So if we were to add a sphere, so just mesh, UV sphere, we'll scale it down. For simplicity's sake, we'll just move it straight up and then move it over. So if we were to take this sphere, we were to add rigid body properties to it and leave it as active and then click on play, you can see how it's gonna fall and your dominoes are just gonna kinda of do this weird like exploding thing, right? They're kinda of like hanging down below the plane. They're not doing what we want them to do. So the reason for that is because we haven't applied this modifier yet. So we need to apply this modifier to make these all individual objects, right? So we're gonna click on apply. The problem with that is now we've applied this modifier, meaning we have more than the one object in here, but Notice how they're all still acting as one stiff object, right? Like their own object in here. Well, we need to separate them. So to separate them, we're gonna tab into edit mode. We're gonna type in F3 and we're gonna look for the separate function. So we have these all selected, search for separate and click on mesh separate. 
And we want to separate these by the loose parts. What that means is that means that each one of these parts that isn't touching the others is going to get separated into its own part. And it's still not going to work right because if we click on play, Notice how everything just kind of like explodes, right? Well, the reason that it explodes is because if you look at all of these objects, they all have the same origin point, which is right here. Well, the origin point is how Blender calculates the center of gravity and the rest of the calculation. So what we want to do is we want to tab into edit mode. We want to have all of these selected and we want to go to object, set origin, origin to center of mass. So now each one of these has its own center of mass. Well now, if we were to click play, it's gonna calculate properly, right? Like our dominoes are gonna fall down. We're not gonna to worry too much about these falling through right now. In general, you can see how this is basically calculating these the way that we want it to do it. So now, what we can do is we can do something a little bit more complex. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this domino right here, and I'm just gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna do a Shift D, so then I'm gonna take this domino, I'm just gonna move it over here, right? So we're gonna do something very similar but with a much more complex path. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start by doing a Shift A, we're gonna add a curve. We wanna move this curve over to where our domino is, right? So now we've got our domino in here. I'm gonna jump over to solid mode so that we can see the domino. And we're just gonna set this up right here. And so what we want to do is we want to take this curve and we want to edit it. So we can edit it by clicking, by tabbing into edit mode with it selected. I'm just going to rotate this so that this is a little bit straighter for right now. And then I'm just going to move this and I'm going to start adding points, right? So I'm just going to do an E to extrude this. And notice how when I extrude this, this allows me to add pieces of this curve. And so you're gonna to wanna to make sure to rotate these so that, the, so that you're not getting really tight corners in here, but I'm basically going to extrude this so that I get kind of a complex path. So this ought to be enough for right now. And so remember how we used an array earlier in order to create dominoes along this singular path? Well, now we're gonna do the same thing over here. So we're gonna take this domino and we're gonna add an array modifier to it. And for this object, instead of having this in here as a fixed count, like we had before, we wanna change this to fit a curve. So basically what we want this to do is we want this to create enough dominoes to follow all the way along this curve, right? So in order to do that, we can click the little eyedropper here and then click on our curve. Notice how right now you just get this giant long thing in here, right? It's not quite doing what we want it to do yet, but it's a start. So we've got this in here, we've got the length. Well, now we wanna add a curve modifier in order to deform this so that it follows along the curve. So to do that, we're gonna click on the little eyedropper, click on our curve. So what that's done is that's taken this array and it's bent it along this curve. And notice how there's no space between our dominoes right now. Well, we wanna bump this up a little bit. And maybe we'll bump this up to something like two for right now. So we don't really want to keep this. Um, we don't want a giant spacing in between these because you start missing on dominoes on these corners. One other thing to be aware of is when you do this around these corners, you might get a little bit of deformation in here. So you might get your shapes being a little bit deformed. Don't worry too much about it, but just know these aren't going to be perfect. And so what this has done is this has kind of uh, created this so that it goes along this path. Well now, and by the way, you can move your original domino if you want to. And notice how when you move the original domino, it's also going to affect um, the way that this is getting bent along this curve. So you can adjust this because this is live. But now what I wanna do is I wanna save this. So I'm gonna go up to file and just save a copy of this. So we've saved a copy. Well now, we need to come in here and we need to start applying these. So we're gonna do this in order. We're gonna start by applying the array modifier. Then we're gonna apply the curve modifier. So now these are all in here as their own objects, but we need to tab into edit mode, select them all and separate them, right? So tab into edit mode, A, F3, find separate. You wanna separate these by loose parts. And then remember that we need to take the origins in here 
and we need to um, apply the individual origins based on center of mass. So the way that we're going to do that is just tab into object mode, object, set origin, origin to center of mass. So now each one of these has their own center of mass. And remember, because the object that we created had the physics properties associated with it, we don't have to go in and make any changes on this. So now if we click play, the only thing that's going to happen is this over here is going to run. So now let's just take this sphere and let's just move it this way. So we're going to move it over here. Maybe I'll go into top view to make sure that this is aligned properly. And we'll just drop this down. So now if we click on play, notice how these dominoes are going to fall over. All right, and so one thing you might have noticed though when we did that is when we click play, we've got some dominoes that are falling over over here. So if we go look at these, they're falling over inside of our simulation, which is messing up our whole simulation. And so what we want to do is we want to go back and we just want to take a look at these. So the easiest way is just to kind of zoom in and then look at the ones that are falling over. So for example, this one right here is falling over. Well, if you look at this at the very beginning, for some reason, the center of mass didn't get placed at the center of the, uh, it didn't actually place the origin at the center of mass. I don't know why this happens. I don't know if this is a blender bug or what, but usually we can solve this just by going back and just selecting all of these again. So we're just going to come in here, select them again from the front view. Uh, you may want to go into wireframe mode to make sure you get them all. But then we're just going to do the same thing again. And we can take a look at this one when we do it. So we're just going to go to object, set origin, origin to center of mass again. And you can see how these are now aligned. I have no clue why it doesn't just do that right to begin with but um, everything seems to be working fine. Let's go into material preview mode and then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to run this simulation. So now notice how this is falling along this path and none of my dominoes over here are falling. So this is doing what we want it to do. And notice how you can zoom in and kind of look at these as we go inside of our simulation. So um, this simulation is going to run until we hit the end of our frames, right? So this is going to run all the way through 250. So it's going to run through 250 and uh, then it's going to stop. If you want it to run longer than that, you can change your final frame. So you could make this like 350 if you wanted to. And so notice how if you run this through frame 250, it stops the simulation. So in order to get this simulation to go further, we need to go um, inside, even though we've set this to 350. So we need to go into our uh, settings right here. Um, this is the scene settings. And you need to go into the rigid body world settings and you can adjust the simulation end. And now you can see how this is gonna simulate this falling through 350 frames instead of 250. And so depending on how you figured this, um, these may not be falling quickly enough. So I think these are falling okay, but I have seen in the past, if people do this with like really large dominoes, um, I've seen this run kind of slow. So if that's the case, you can just adjust your speed of your simulation in here to maybe something like two. So this is inside of your rigid body world settings right here. So you could adjust the speed if you wanted this simulation to run faster. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it at one because I think it looks okay. So then you could do a lot of different things with this, right? So you could set this to rendered in Eevee. Maybe add a light. And then have these actually render out as they fall. So you could definitely do that. You could also set up a camera that follows along with these if you wanted to do that using keyframes. So you could do a shift A, you could add a camera object. We're gonna hit zero. We're gonna make sure that in our camera settings, under view, that we've set this to lock our camera to our view. Well, then we could set our camera to follow along with these dominoes, right? So we could set this right here and you'd probably want to go into your animation settings when you do this. All right, so we'll go into our animation tab. We're going to select our camera and we want to insert a keyframe for the location and rotation of the camera. Really probably just the location actually. So we're just going to mouse over it in this frame, type the I key and then insert a keyframe for location. So what that's done is that's inserted a keyframe 
right here. Well, then we can play our simulation. And let's say at 70, we wanted our camera to be a little further along. We would select our camera and then move forward. And then we would move our mouse over here, type I to insert a keyframe. And in this case, I'm just going to say all channels. And so what that's done is that's basically keyframe the location of our camera inside of our animation. So that means our camera is going to move from this point to this point right here. And then the dominoes are just going to keep going and we're going to stop right here. So this has allowed us to create this animation. Well, now we can export this. And so I'm only going to export the first uh, 100 frames or something like that. So I might set this to 100 for our end on our animation. But then we're just going to use Eevee in order to export a really quick animation. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And then we'll go over to our scene settings and adjust our output. We'll call it an FFmpeg video. We'll pick our location. We'll go ahead and leave it at 24 frames per second. We'll go ahead and leave this resolution. We're not going to worry about um, things. We're not going to worry about things like textures for this right here. But what we want to do now is we're just going to want to go to render, click on render animation. So what that's going to do is that's going to go through and this is going to render this out with Eevee. So it's going to render out all 100 frames. Then it's going to stitch them together. And notice how at the moment this is not actually showing up with an animation. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this uh, button right here. Well, what we need to do is we need to bake this animation. So because what this is doing is this is trying to calculate this right now inside of our viewport and it's not working. And so what we need to do is we need to pre-calculate our physics. So to do that, we're going to go into our uh, scene settings, rigid body world, and under cache, we want to click on the button for bake. And so what bake is going to do is bake is going to go through and it's going to pre-calculate the physics so that it's not running this calculation as we render. And we'll go ahead and set our simulation start to just 100 for right now because that's where our image is going to stop. We're just going to click on this button for bake. And so what it's going to do is it's going to go through and notice how it says that it's storing all of these different frames. So basically what it's doing is it's storing all of these in memory. So it's pre-calculated these, meaning this is going to run much faster. Well now, if we go up to render and click on render animation, it's going to render that scene, but now our images are actually going to render out. So see how now what this is doing is this is actually rendering our animation and our different frames in here. So it's going to go through and it's going to render out all 100 frames, and it's going to export them as a video. All right, so then, once this is rendered out our 100th frame, we can open up this file that was created. You can see how we've got an animation with these dominoes falling. And so you can use this to create a lot of different interesting animations and a lot of other stuff like that, but this should give you a good foundation for starting to do this. If you guys are interested in creating more interesting domino things, leave me, leave me a comment down below and let me know. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you been doing stuff like this in Blender? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.